Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We're going to try to do a full lunar landing mission at a targeted location in one episode. Uh, last time I didn't quite make it, but this time I have a lot less uh, upfront explaining to do as far as changes that I've made. And we've got our lander ready to go on the launch pad. And we are losing money now, so we better hurry up. Uh, Muhammad and Sarolta are both uh, trained again, and we're training Barbell and Heidi just in case. Uh, so it is our first crew to the moon that is going up again. But first we have to send the lander over. And yeah, we need to get going and finish this up because we're declining here, and we need to pick up some other program to keep ourselves afloat. They'll probably will have to cut down on staff. So actually I am going to reduce the staff here which will help our funds. It'll take longer to roll out the launch with the crew, but it's probably safer this way. Okay, so let's launch the lander. Okay, we went a little bit past, but let's get going. I'm in a hurry. Okay, so ignition. And launch. So one wrinkle as far as trying to get this done quickly is that we have to pick up the science that I left in the landers, the, the samples. We'll try to get to them, but only if it's convenient, of course. One of the landers has some Delta V to work with, uh, the other does not. They both have, in theory, different samples. It really depends on the inclinations that we're going to. We're past the speed of sound. I did fix the little drill on this lander, so its surface sample thingamajig is gonna be extended in the right direction. I also increased the number of samples it can carry to four, and that's just in case it's the one that does the rendezvous with the other lander. The Mark 1-3 pod apparently has room for 10, so that's no problem. Okay, G-Force mitigation. Okay, booster set. Fairing set. Now for the Mark 1-3 command pod launch, we have this rocket now with the four RZ-20s on the upper stage, so it's got more margin there, and we extended its service module, and that's the fuel for its RZ-20, so that it could potentially uh, do more rendezvous stuff with the other landers in order to collect the samples. Of course, this whole business of trying to collect the samples again uh, will take more time, so I was trying to get this done in one episode, but if it looks like it's uh, gonna end up running over 40 minutes, then it's gonna end up two episodes. Oh, oh, that brought it to orbit. Uh, just automatic, I... anyway. Yeah, we, we were supposed to leave that suborbital, but anyway. So let's just proceed. I might as well start the RPWS. We did uh, get the RPWS data from around the moon, having left that one in orbit there. We won't get much from here because we're not sticking around for 30 days. Oh, I forgot to adjust the tracking on these. Well, then it'll work out in the end anyway. Yeah, that's one thing that I forgot to fix. I think this is going to take a mid-course correction for sure. Uh, so we'll just leave it as is for now. Lots of bits of stuff floating around there. Thing is taking too long to turn. Let's just go. Well, that's not pointed directly at any of them, so it's all right. Okay. And... So, well... Normally we try to line up with the tug, but, uh, well, uh, it looks like we could land at, like, the cart again and stuff like that, so maybe we shouldn't be too worried about hitting something new. And it'll save us one trip to a lander. 
So uh, yeah, let's just line up the tug as usual. Okay, out we go. Okay, we will use the engines briefly. But then we'll finish it off with the RCS. The derelict lander, this one here, which is the one that we just did a targeted landing with, is a troublesome one though. Um, it doesn't have enough delta V and it's not in line with everything else. So that'll be the interesting one to get to. The thing is, if we land at Descartes again, we'll probably be launching this into that orbit again, maybe. Um, so if that's the case, then this lander can quickly grab the stuff, maybe, and bring it back before it does the inclination change to meet up with the Mark 1-3 command pod. So that's the idea. Okay, with that we are on our way again. Okay, ignition. Okay, well, we're in orbit. It's uh, 107 by 48. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing right now, but it's good enough and we only have one meter per second left in this stage, so we might as well separate. We're not going to use the RCS to fix that, I don't think. We could round it out, but maybe I'll at least get the apoapsis into double digits. Nah, it's bringing the periapsis down too much. Okay, so yes, separation. And we'll deorbit this thing. Very good. And make sure this keeps charged. We really don't need to do the RPWS here again. We've done all it all of it here in space low, so we'll just tuck it in for now. Alright, that should do the trick. It is spinning. And let's go launch our crew. We'll figure out the potential sample pickup situation after everything is in orbit around the moon. Okay, we've rolled out and we're ready to launch, but looking at the situation, the sites are going to be going into the dark. Um, we're going to be, I mean, we will launch and then four days afterwards, they're going to all be in the dark, so we'll wait. Um, it was because I reduced the number of people at the pad, I think, and so the timing was bad. So I'll uh, time warp a bit until they're coming into daylight instead. Here on the nighttime side, they're really well lined up. It just might be a bad time of the month for some of these locations. I don't think we got to land at the same place as we did last time. Maybe we'll go for the Sea of Tranquility after all. Uh, maybe that's about right. Okay, let's try and go. Okay, our two planned ones were automatically filled in and the other seat is empty. So that's okay. There they are. They've had to go through the bathroom a little bit, but SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. They're all okay. And launch. Okay, booster set. All good. Launch escape system set. All right, into the dawn. We will be deorbiting this stage, so we'll need a brief light from the next stage, the Griffin Four, if you will. It's gonna be a short ignition, but here we go. Oh well, we need to anyway. Gosh, I swear one of the Kerbals is just too heavy. I must be not estimating correctly how much they weigh or something. Oh, you know what it is? I bet it's the EVA and shoot packs. Because those don't get added in the VAB dialogue, right? When we put the two Kerbals in, it shows extra mass and less delta V and everything. But that's not including the shoot and the EVA pack. And it's probably the shoot and the EVA pack that keeps messing me up here. 
But all right, uh, that would make sense. Okay, so I do cut things as close as possible too. In this case, actually, the stage is uh, underutilized compared to what we have with the lander because we just got more stuff on top, and I'm using the same controller. In this case, getting there quickly would be beneficial, I think. That's our lander. That's the Sea of Tranquility. And... In four days... Well, let's say, uh, we're getting there three days, five hours. Probably get there in three days. That'll give us time to figure things out, I think. A quarter of the moon's rotation is about seven days, so... Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Is getting there in a bit of a hurry. Oh, we should be going. All right. Okay, well, that's pretty much what I wanted, right? Pretty much. Uh, we don't have to bring that in. Let's get the mid-course correction and that will do the trick, probably. But yeah, because we're coming in sooner, we're going to take more to capture, probably. Yeah, well, we'll correct the remaining 1.3-ish on our capture burn. Okay, so just a 1.5 meter per second correction. We'll do that with the RCS. And out we go. Crossing radiation belt. Um, the RCS seems to be wiggling back and forth. Why is it doing that? Okay, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it gets a little bit confused. Okay, well that's lower than I was expecting. We'll figure it out later. Showing a close intercept there, but... Well, I guess we could really expedite our approach to the lander, potentially. So taking a look now, we're just about right. The Sea of Tranquility is right there. Okay, we've got a one-orbit encounter right there with the lander. Uh, it's going to take quite a large burn to meet up with it right there because it's 279, but we should be able to swing that. Uh, the issue is, you know, picking up the stuff from the other landers, but I feel like that's something we should do after we do the main mission, right? Grabbing the extra samples. I'm putting that off. I've, I've been putting that off, but I think it's just better to work on the main mission first. Okay, I uh, will in fact not use this stage for the burn. We will separate. And ignition. There's the depleted one. Depleted actually has fuel. Uh, so we could bring it around. Afterwards, I guess, maybe. Okay, let's figure this out. Okay, 1.4 kilometers there. Nope, oh, it's actually 200 meters up there right now. Okay, proceeding. Well, these two moon veterans are well suited to wrap things up here. Okay, selling fuel down. Basically right in line with it, the ignition. Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting further away there. The rest we can do with RCS, I think. Oh, oh, docked. 
gosh, when they fire RCS right at the end, I do not like that. Um, that was before we connected. I don't know why they fired RCS like that, but okay. Anyway, we docked. Okay, grab board. Well, separation. We certainly can't get another lander on here until they separate. So. Right, and we will certainly land first and then worry about the rest of the stuff. We are going for the Sea of Tranquility this time. That certainly looks like the first one there. So 0 0.41 degrees north. All right, well, I'm actually going to math this. 24.6 minutes, so that's that. And that's north, let's be clear. And then 23, yeah, 0 0.26. 0 0.26 times 60 is 15.6. 15.6 is that. Okay, and it is east. All right, so in theory, our target coordinates are as exact as I can possibly get it given the numbers that we have here. We are confirmed to have four days of supplies, so that's no problem. So we need to go for south. The hope is that our landing site will eventually be crossing north and we'll have to do less of an inclination correction when we finally get back. After all, we're waiting three days this time, so it's gonna end up like all the way over here somewhere or maybe further, and then we're gonna have a big inclination gap but uh, since it's for starting further south, it's better. We would have liked it maybe even further south than this. But basically, 90 degrees away from the target. And let's say we did bring it in a lot. Well, by the time we get there, things will change, though. But that seems too far south, so let's maybe... Just that. Now yeah, we'll try that. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, not bringing it in so much. We need some lead time. Okay, ignition on this one. Right, so now 22 minutes to there. We'll wait until five minutes before doing anything. Okay, surface, of course, and ignition. Here it goes. But we know that we have to be pretty darn accurate, so. Looks alright with this pitch angle for now. We are technically going up a bit, which is not what I want to do, but let's try and flatten that out. But the one fall short again. Tell you what, let's wait a bit. And maybe a little bit more. Looks pretty good. As if I could see accurately enough there. Or a one kilometer sort of radius or anything like that. Uh, let's not pitch up so much. Oh, uh, I think we're overshooting this time. That's harder to correct too. Okay, now we really need to go this way. Okay, separation. Oh, oh, kill rotation. Whatever it just said, it's not good. Oh, okay. Probably because that has flipped over there. We're doing very emergency maneuvers here to try and get to the right location, and it's not good. Okay, well, we're landing around here somewhere.
Okay. We are down. Less than 2,100 meters per second left. And it says target difference 1.122. And yeah, it doesn't say we're there. So, um... Great. Okay. It's not even long enough. So... We're gonna have Muhammad do a little walk. Get how far off Apollo 11 was from its target, but it was pretty far off if I recall. And we were one kilometer off from the target coordinates. Tried to correct as much. Okay, here we've entered and 128 meters, okay? 128 meters. All right. Uh, well, we should get those things. I should have started those already. Plant a flag. Triple tasking here. Okay, so... Mohammed... Up. At the Sea of Tranquility. Uh, just call me Neil. Okay. All right, back to the pod. The EVA report is worth more than the sample. Should we even get the samples from the pods? I mean, really. <laughs> okay, we'll see. But stuff is tight for the lander right now because we had to do so much correction right at the end. Okay, time warping while these get completed. Okay. On top. Board. Okay. So now the clock. Oh, actually, uh, it seemed to start. Uh, it seemed to count the time. Oh, because the pod has been sitting here. Okay. So anyway, we're going to leave. Well, we'll just keep Mohammed. Uh, keep focused on Mohammed, maybe. Or, hmm. Maybe we can get that one pod over. The depleted one. Alright, so I went to the tracking station to turn to the lander, the depleted lander, to get to go over to the Mark 1-3 pod to transfer the science, but I decided to check back to see that this was counting. But, and it is, which is good, but this also hopped. It hopped and then landed back before I could press record, and that makes me worried. It also makes me worried that we apparently have 72 meters per second. Uh, another thing that made me worried was the fact that we are getting close to the dark side here and we're gonna lose light. The solar panels are fixed right now. They're gonna get less and less charge. So I, I would like to just stick with this for now. And I don't know about the 72. Hopefully when we ignite the engines, uh, Mike Jeb will realize it has more than that. I think I'm gonna shut down this avionics like that for sure. Another thing is if we time warp too fast, the power is messed up sometimes. Oh, and look at our orientation. That's weird. Uh, okay, it didn't hop this time. But it seriously hopped pretty high when I turned to it. Oh, oh, see. Uh, yeah, when I time warp too much, it messes up the electric charge, and we're not in a good situation for that right now. I don't suppose Muhammad could get out and sort of knock them a little bit. Well, now it's showing the right delta V down there. That's a relief. But I think that was just a mech jeb thing. Uh, it doesn't seem like we're going to hold out on electric charge very well. We're depleting now. Uh, backup fuel cell would have been a good idea in this case. I thought we would always be landing well, but... This time we sort of rushed it. One more day is what we need. It's possible, but uh, again, the depletion rate is going up. Okay, all right, all right. It, it's I think it's okay. Um, yeah, it's happy. Yeah, 
I mean, maybe we could, uh, given that the the raid was depleting, maybe we could have done the rendezvous stuff, but it's probably a good idea that I didn't. So we'll get the pod closer by, and then we'll just do 90 degrees and fix inclination later. We're up here. It's a big gap. And we don't have enough delta V to handle it. I think we might need the tug. I'm gonna bring that in while we launch. I'm not feeling adventurous here. Okay, uh, well, fine. Uh, go. Oh, 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 no, why are you turning? I thought the RCS was actually doing something like kill rotation. Oh, gosh. So much for not adventurous. <sighs> Seems like a 16 degree gap is the best we can do. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty big gap. Right now we have sort of an approach there, but uh, we're not correcting that immediately with this. But maybe we'll get help from help from the target, but I, I sort of want to bring the tug in here, maybe, if we can. <laughs> 